So today we're going to be looking at this. This is, these are Energini uh, radio controlled sockets. They're compatible with the Raspberry Pi. They're just RF remote sockets, but with uh, a little header on there so you can plug it onto the board essentially. Now these can control up to four sockets. This box contains two and the compatible transmitter board. Let's have a quick look at them. I've had this for about, I don't know, maybe two years and I haven't used it. So that's everything that comes in the box and there are some instructions on the back. Um, so we've got the two sockets, two there plugged into each other, a little green button on the front. And then we've got this, which is the transmitter. And get rid of that. So you can see that it um, is designed so that it's got these two road headers there that you can plug on and there's its little aerial. I think it's just a 433 megahertz uh, device. So uh, you could probably sniff that packet that's going to come out of there anyway. But it is, uh, it gives out, I think it's a, a 24 bit packet uh, and four bits for controlling the plugs and 20 bits of the address of the transmitter. So each one has a, a unique identifier so that you can't really do cross talk with them. Now, I'm going to use it with Raspberry Pi. You don't need to though. I had a look at the instructions and actually you've just got four pins to set which one of the plugs is coming on. So all you really need is power, enable, um, and I think there's a send pin, and then the, uh, the four uh, binary uh, inputs. And so essentially that's all you need to do, but we're going to be having a look at it with um, just the Raspberry Pi. We're just going to see how simple it is to get started. Um, there are some caveats to how you can use these. So this would just fit directly on top of the board like that. And that's it done. Essentially, that's all you need to do in terms of hardware setup for the Raspberry Pi. However, with these plugs, You've got this, uh, they're a little bit dusty. They have just been stored in a box for ages and never got around to using them. You have this uh, green button on the front and this is the button that enables you to put it into setup mode, but also to turn it on and off. So if you just have that plugged into a wall and your device is on, you can just turn it off with that button because you won't be switching it off at the switch because this needs to remain on. So what we'll do first is we'll get an extension cable up onto the desk so we can plug one of these in. Right, I have this rather grotty old extension, so we'll be using that. It's in its setup mode, and that means that we can, in fact, if I plug something in, have I got something here that we can just demo the on and off portion? No, I haven't, I have to go and find something. However, um, this is the section, this is the sort of setup state, so that when we're running the Raspberry Pi, we can then tell it what commands to listen for, and that's essentially assigning it a number so when this sends out its data, it's sending it to all of the plugs at once. And um, it needs to identify which one of the codes it's gonna to respond to, which one of the four uh, digits. So it's, it's, it's zeros and ones essentially, but um, it has uh, four bits that it's going to respond to. And whether it responds to 1011 or 1001, uh, is up to the plug. And so it has on and off commands and it also has um, all on and all off. So let's jump into the Raspberry Pi and have a little look. Right, so uh, I'm sort of ready to go. I'm just looking at the website for the Energini stuff and currently the price is $21.99. I think I picked these up from Amazon for £20. I think they're probably an offer. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the Amazon thing. It'll be one of those affiliate links, whatever. Um, you know what that means. but. I'll also put a link into the Energini page. Now, obviously there are loads of ways to do this. So you can use Sonoff devices, you can, you can hack their own plugs. In fact, they do some um, plugs on here. So if I just go to another product on their website, they have similar things. So if I just scroll down a little bit, there we go. So they have these four pack remote controlled sockets with a remote. Now, Funnily enough, I think it's probably exactly the same board that's in, in that uh, remote. So you could just take that apart and hack it, I imagine. And it's only $29.99. So you get four plugs for not too far off a price, really. You can hear my neighbors screaming next door. They're little kids. I think they like to play like that. Um, and if I look at their PDF, this is the, on the, uh, on the website, they have some instructions and code. So if I just jump back to the page, they must be having a great time. Uh, 
you'll see down here hidden at the bottom you've got product instructions and product software the instructions is a pdf and the software is a python file so if i just jump back to the pdf you can see it's quite an extensive set of instructions and information on how this works and if i go a bit further down you can see here um, in fact a little bit further up i think it actually talks about the instructions being 24 bits i can't actually see that now but um yeah it's 24 bits and so it says 20 sends 20 bits as um the the unique identifier for the transmitter and then four bits to tell the sockets what to do so you've got d3 d2 d1 and d0 and they're all unique so it can do sockets up, up to four sockets sockets on or sockets off and that's why a remote is really easy because all it is is zeros and ones and it's a unique pattern for each one so you don't even need a microcontroller to do this but you could also do it with an arduino or an ESP8266, whatever you wanted to do, which is, I think is quite interesting. Anyway, we're here to uh, jump into the board. Oh, I connected this um, red light up. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, I connected this horrendous red light up. So that's gonna be the thing that turns on. Uh, so let's jump into this. So I've got the IP, I'm just gonna paste that in. That's the IP for the Raspberry Pi. I'm running off SSH. It's actually plugged into the laptop through the USB 3 port to power it. I know that's not strictly a good idea, but that's what I'm doing. It's not like I'm doing anything very high current. It is connecting over Wi-Fi though. So I've put the code on to the Raspberry Pi via um, WinSCP, I think it's called, which enables me to go into the file system using SFTP. So um, I didn't need to copy and paste anything. I could just drag the file across. Now, uh, I want to go to, should we have a look at it actually? Sudo Actually, we need to go to the directory, cd documents, and then sudo nano plugs.py. Now this is the code that they give you. It's relatively simple. If you go through here, you'll see it's just GPIO setup mostly, a little bit of timing for the, the board so that it'll start the, uh, the modulator and then stop it. And all it does is set these zeros and ones. So very, very simple code. Um, so if I just run the code, sudo python plugs.py. So this is what we're greeted with. Um, I could probably make that window a little bigger actually. Let's do that. And then we can see a little bit more of um, what it's trying to say. Oops. Uh, Runtime warning, this channel is already in use. It's probably because I just ran this a second ago and forgot to start the recording, so there's that. <laughs> Ignore that though. Uh, this program will now loop around and send codes as following. So when we hit a key, socket one will be on. Now we're currently still in this flashing LED mode. So let's just hit enter and see what happens. And if I want to send the off code, so you'll notice that the, um, the light has gone off here. So I think it's accepted the code and that's the off code. Now we don't have the second socket in, so we're just gonna skip past through that. Hey, so we've got a bit there, it said sending the all on code, and then we've got this lovely warm light, all off code, this is cool. I've never played with mains before, so this is kind of exciting for me. And hit return to send on one. Hey, now that is simple, isn't it? So let's, close this oops I'm sure it's control control C is it yeah control C so let's uh, sudo nano plugs dot py so I think I'll look look at this a bit more in the future and try and figure something out uh, but I just wanted to see how easy it would be to get started and I guess the other one's just as easy but let's have a look at for the code for turning number one on. So there we go, to, to turn the socket one on, we send one, 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 one. And that, all we have to do there is put true on all the GPIO outputs, time sleep 0 0.1, GPIO output 22. 
So that's enabling the modulator. Excellent comments in here, really. Uh, keep enabled for a short period and then disable the modulator. And so enabled for a short period is just the time for it to send that message over to the plug. Right, sorry, uh, I'm gonna interject on myself on the previous video that I did. Now it's a few days later and I watched my video back and I realized I didn't really give you a great example. I'll let the guy continue in a minute, but I just thought I'd interject and show you um, a real world example of how you might use it. So uh, that is use these plug things that I was talking about before. Um, so what I, I probably just explained that uh, I probably said this is the section of code that you'd use to turn the thing on. Well, anyway, I decided to pull that, that code out and, uh, and give you a real world example. So if I just go to CD documents and sudo python plug one dot py. Now plug one dot py, all it does is it turns this lamp on and off every five seconds. So five seconds on, five seconds off, five seconds on, <laughs> five seconds on, there we go. And then um, five seconds off, there we go. Uh, and all it's doing is triggering that same command and the off command over and over again in a loop. Uh, and it'll just interrupt if we get to the, the keyboard bit. Um, but it does mean that's on. So I'll just switch it off with the, the switch on the front of it. So let's have a quick look at the code before other David gets annoyed that I'm interrupting the video for so long. So let's do sudo nano plug one dot py. I could have done a thing, Never mind. Um, so essentially I've pulled this straight out of that example. So you can see that we've got all of the same stuff here for uh, uh, oh, there's no point using the mouse on this, is there? All the same stuff for import. We've got all the GPIO set up and um, changing them to outputs. Really important that you keep that as it is. Then all I've done here is defined a function called plug one. It accepts a variable. At the moment, this is a character. It could be a Boolean or whatever you wanted it to be really, just as long as you can indicate whether you want it on or off. And this function just turns it on and this function turns it off. This is straight from that example code that came on the website. So I'm not really gonna provide this. You can pull this out yourself. Um, and all it is is just um, in an if else uh, thing so that if it does nothing else, it has no, no idea what to do. So um, yeah, you've just got a, a while loop here and it does try and accept so you can do the keyboard thing. Anyway, really simple real world example. Fantastic. I'm really excited about playing around with some home automation stuff. I could have done this with um, Sonoff devices or, you know, home brewed my own thing with some relays and stuff, but this, you know, these, these have passed various things, like it's got the CE thing there. Um, I'm not gonna pretend to even know anything about electrical safety. So basically that's why I'm not gonna play around with mains electricity yet. Uh, <laughs> I've seen too many of Big Clive's things to know that you can easily hurt yourself. So I like the idea of using these plugs. I think what would have been better now, knowing how easy it is, would probably have been buying ones with the remote and hacking that remote. But yeah, this is cool. And the fact that it, um, it comes with excellent instructions and really great commenting is, um, is perfect. So I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, I'll put links in the description. So if you fancy exploring it yourself, then you're welcome to. I'd love to hear about um, any experiments that you've done in the home. Um, with sort of home automation or turning plug sockets on and off again. I think I'm gonna just use it to have a light turn on in the morning to try and wake me up or maybe turn the kettle on. Maybe that's a good idea, maybe it isn't. Have to make sure there's some water in there, I guess. Anyway, I'll see you guys again next time.